everybody. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, building custom figures and that's going to be something that's uh, going to be coming up more. Um, my thought is that uh, like the figures I really find the most exciting are ones that are novel and not just novel for the sake of being novel but um, they're kind of breaking out of the cookie cutter things that Matplotlib or other tools give us uh, to show something that's very tailored to uh, the data at hand, right? And so to do that, uh, we actually don't need to know that many things. We need to be able to know how to draw, uh, you know, circles and rectangles and lines and text. And if you can draw those things, well, there's all kinds of different plots you can generate. Okay. And so actually, if I look at this tutorial here on Matplotlib, which I'm not really assigning as reading or anything, uh, but it's saying that as you push the limits of custom figure generation, um, you're going to have to figure out how the coordinate systems work. Um, it turns out that when you have a figure, there's actually multiple coordinate systems going on. Um, you know, there's one coordinate system for the data, one for the axes, one for the figures, one for the whole um, image. And we have to think a little bit about how to transform between those. Let me just give you an example of um, some custom figure uh, generation that I think really turned out well. Uh, so this is a visualization showing um, all the different airports um, around the world, really. and what the lines are showing, well, first off, the lines are a scatter plot, right? But what does the color and angle of the line means? Uh, that indicates what direction the runways are in. Um, in general, um, air, airplanes like to take off flying into the wind. It's, I don't know, for whatever reason, better. And so we can really see here, based on the orientation of all these airports, um, which, uh, which direction the wind is usually blowing in, right? Like you can see there's a strong east to west wind along the coast of Florida. Um, and then kind of in the middle of the country, it seems to be more north to south, right? So um, things like this are not necessarily easy to do with, uh, you know, the out-of-the-box scatter functionality that um, uh, that Pandas or Matplotlib gives us. Uh, but if we can just know a little bit, like, how to draw one of these lines at a specific place, uh, we can build things like this ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to head over here. And, uh, and today I'm just going to try and introduce the coordinate system. And so the only kind of thing I'm going to be drawing... Um, is a circle, right? Eventually we'll learn other things to draw, like lines and, and rectangles. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to say um, uh, from matplotlib import pi plot as plt. And, um, and then from plt, I'm going to create, let me make this a little bit larger for you. I'm going to say dot subplots. And um, subplots returns two things um, it returns uh, the figure and then uh, some axes. Um, generally, there will be multiple axes if I pass something in like um, n columns equals two, something like that. For now, I'm not going to do that, so I'm actually just going to get um, one back. So it sounds a little funny that I'm, sounds like I'm creating multiple ones. I'm really only creating one subplot here. So I do that. And, um, and how can I draw in that area? So uh, in Matplotlib, there's this thing called a patch, right? And uh, patches come in different forms. One of the patches is a circle, right? So you can see here a circle is a kind of patch in Matplotlib. And, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new patch. And when I'm doing this, I've looked at the documentation. What well, basically what I need is I need an x, a y, and a radius. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to try going right in the middle of the plot. I'm going to say I can see along these x and y axes that it's uh, it goes from 0 to 1, so I'll say uh, 0 0.5 uh, and 0 0.5, and then uh, maybe a radius of 0 0.1. So I do that. Uh, nothing really happens. Uh, this just created a patch, right? So I have some sort of patch object here. And if I want to add it to, say, this axis subplot, I have to say uh, ax dot add um, patch. And, uh, and I can add P. And you know, actually, I'm going to start using a different function, which is actually add artist, which is slightly more general. Um, I think we can always just use add artist. I'm not going to get bogged down in the details if I run that. Uh, nothing really happens because this figure was already shown. I have to move this up. I have to move this up here. And now hopefully, now hopefully I actually get a circle. Okay, so great. I see a circle there. And, um, and there's various things I can customize about that circle. For example, um, I can say, uh, uh, well, well, maybe I want to have some sort of edge color. So I'll say edge color equals red. And, um, and that didn't work because I can't spell edge. Okay, you can maybe see that there. Uh, maybe I want to get rid of the fill. And so that's the face color is the part that fills it in. 
And so, I mean, I can make this red as well, right? Um, in this case, I'm just going to say none. I don't want any face color. I just want an empty circle. Um, and, and then I can also change the line width, right? So I could say things like line width equals three. And there we go. Okay, so what you're probably noticing here is that doesn't actually look like a circle. It looks like an oval, right? And, and that's because it's a circle with respect to the data. As you can see, the x-axis um, is a little bit more spread out than the y-axis, right? So, so if I actually look at the width of this circle on the x-axis, I see, oh, it's 0.2. You know, the radius was 0.1, so the diameter is 0.2. If I look at the height of it on the y-axis, it goes from 0.4 to 0.6 again. All right, so it's a circle with respect to the data, uh, but, but not with respect to what I'm actually seeing on the screen. Okay, so we're going to figure out how to do that. Um, and, and so what this is really coming down to is the fact that AX has some scaling to it. It has um, a coordinate system. So to explore that coordinate system, let me, let me build on this a little bit. So I'm going to paste this down here. Um, I'm actually going to create two different, I'm going to say n columns equals 2. I'm going to create two different axes subplots. And, um, and right, so now these would be axes. This would basically be um, an array of two axes areas. Um, I, can, I can immediately unpack those if I want. So I could say AX1, AX2 equals that. And this will automatically put my figure there and then break up that second piece into here. And so I could do this. And, um, and now I could do this over here. I could say ax artist, and I, and I get a circle over here. Now you see it's an oval in the other direction uh, because it's, each of these individuals is kind of squeezed horizontally and stretched out vertically. So I'm going to do a couple different versions of this. So let me, um, let me actually create a function because I want to draw several circles. So I'm going to call this um, a relative uh, circle. And, uh, and all of this is going to go inside of that. And um, I'm, I'm going to have a few things here. I'm going to pass in my, um, what area do I want to plot it at? So this area will be, you know, maybe I want to plot an AX1. Maybe I want to plot an AX2, right? So I'm going to pass in what area. I'm going to use that. And, uh, and then I'm going to pass in my X and my Y. Right? So I'm going to say X, Y, uh, just like that. And um, so this is a relative circle, right? Because the circle is relative to what area it's in. So if I create a relative circle in um, AX1, and maybe I'll do it 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's using the coordinate system of AX1 on the left, right? If I, if I do this, I'm going to draw another circle now. Just a, an aside, we have to be a little bit careful. You can never add a circle to multiple areas, right? So that's one reason I put this in a function, right? Because I want to um, create a new circle patch each time I'm adding it. Okay, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to add it to 2. Um, you see kind of the same thing there. Um, if, I, if I changed the, the coordinates of this, right, so for example, if I say something like this, uh, ax2.set uh, xlim, maybe I set it from uh, negative 3 to 1, right, you can see that that changes it as well, right? It's still a circle with respect to the data, but it's just very uh, distorted now. Now, um, the reason I call this area instead of AX is that um, it turns out that I can use either AX1, uh, I'm sorry, AX2, AX1, or the figure in general, right? So I can also actually do this. I can say relative circle, and I want to plot on the figure itself at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And there you see I get another oval that's somewhat um, in the middle. The, the coordinate system for the figure, even though we can't see it, um, it goes from 0 to 1. On, along both dimensions. Okay, so, uh, you know, both the width and the height go from 0 0.1, and that's why 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is roughly in the center. Okay, what if we want a real circle? How can we do that? So, in that case, we have to specify a transformation, and it's going to work like this. I'm going to create a new function here. I'm going to say absolute, and the way I do this is I pass in to my patch, I say transform equals figure, right? So this will be a global, right? So I guess this will work later as long as I still have my variable figure. If I'm creating other figures with other names later, this function is not going to help me because I'm not really passing it in here. Okay, by passing figure dot uh, dpi scale transform, that's short for transform. So I'm going to do that, and uh, this one should give me something that's actually absolute, right? So 
uh, let me try this. I'm going to say absolute. And actually, let me make the color change, too. Um, we'll, we'll do like a blue circle this time. Um, uh, just to show the difference. You know, you know what you want? Let's just actually... Let's actually have this one filled in so it's easier to see for everybody. Okay, so I want to create an absolute circle now, which will be this blue filled thing. So I'm going to say absolute circle, and um, and I want to do it on uh, figure, and we'll say one comma one. Okay, and there I go. I see I have that circle down there. And at this point, it might seem like since I'm doing it in absolute coordinates, why am I even bothering specifying area, right? It doesn't matter if I do AX1, AX2, or figure. Well, I guess it mattered there. You see that. I'll talk about why that happened, right? It kind of feels like it doesn't matter what coordinate system I'm using, right? Because this part says force it to be in absolute coordinates. So, so what's the difference here? The, the difference is this. If I do, let me just try to create this a little bit to the left. So here I'm plotting in the figure area. Um, I'm going to plot one in AX1 as well, but I'm going to move it up a bit. So maybe I'll say 2. I can see that the difference is that even though the coordinate system is the same, uh, plotting one of these things uh, within a uh, coordinate system means that it's cut off, right? So even if I did this, right? If I did this one, if I want to plot an area 2, maybe move it up a little bit more, it shows nothing, right? Because, you know, this is out of the range of AX2. Right, so that still matters. Okay. Um, one more detail here is what are these units actually in uh, now that I have this system? And it, it turns out they're in inches. And when I when I create one of these things, right, I can say fig size equals. Uh, let's say I'm going to do like a, a six by four inches. Right, so I run that thing. Um, is that maybe that was actually the default? Maybe I'll say like seven by four. You see that changes it a bit, right? So in this case, right, this is seven inches wide, four inches tall, and so that's what these units are. This says half an inch from the left. So, so if that's correct, what I think that means we should be able to do is that we should be able to say, um, we should be able to say half of seven is 3.5, and half of four is two, and, uh, and if we got that right, this should show up almost in the middle of this plot. And, uh, and sure enough, it does. Um, so anyway, we'll be doing more with coordinate systems and creating these uh, custom uh, points, right? We can already see that we could make our own uh, sort of scatter function based on this. And maybe later we'll do an example where we actually look at um, lines being uh, drawn to show wind direction or something like that.